Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, is Coinbase about to relist XRP? So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? Well, guys, something that we've all been wondering ever since Coinbase initiated this lawsuit against the SEC and has teamed up with Ripple to fight back against this whole regulation by enforcement is when will Coinbase relist XRP? And guys, this is making some waves around the Twitterverse right now. Just take a look at this article right here. XRP back on Coinbase, this may happen, believes top lawyer. Now, a recent question from an XRP community member has raised speculation about whether or not Ripple can move forward and whether Coinbase will relist XRP if Judge Torres rules in Ripple's favor and the SEC appeals. The question was directed to toward pro-crypto attorney Jeremy Hogan. I'll tell you what, man, Jeremy Hogan really deserves a lot of praise for the work that he's done in educating this community over this case and all that he has said and done on YouTube, on Twitter, and all of throughout the, the inner interwebs. This guy has really done a lot for this community. And he's responding with a qualified yes. However, the attorney stated that there are no guarantees as to what Coinbase might do, as it has not been consistent in the past. The inquiry from a member of the XRP community was inspired by Hogan's tweet about the SEC versus Rio Tinto case. Judge Torres made a crucial decision against the SEC in that case, which the SEC later appealed. While the appeals court ultimately upheld Judge Torres's ruling, the entire process took a considerable amount of time. Now, according to Hogan, it is best not to ask how long the process lasted. Guys, we have already been at this for over two years, and most of us are awaiting a summary judgment decision to see how, in fact, this case goes. And a lot of folks and, tech and legal advisors have been out there saying, hey, look, they believe Judge Annalisa Torres is going to rule in Ripple's favor. And guys, if they do, do. What we may see is the SEC's potential to appeal, but guys, a lot of people really believe that should that take place, there's that kind of scenario unfold, that there may be a settlement between Ripple and the SEC to avoid that appeal. Now, as court documents show, the SEC was granted leave to file an interoculatory appeal with the second court on August of 2021. The appeal was argued in May of 2022. And a decision was reached in July of 22, almost another year entirely. While this case is not directly to rate, related to Ripple, it does provide some insight into the potential timeline of the legal per proceedings surrounding XRP. Now, guys, just take a look at this article right here with respect to Coinbase relisting XRP. Now, still no XRP in Coinbase International attorney reacts. Now, recently launched international exchange from Coinbase has sparked reactions to its exclusion of other assets such as XRP. Coinbase, America's largest crypto exchange, recently unveiled its global platform, Coinbase International Exchange, to cater to institutional investors outside the United States. Despite operating outside the jurisdiction of the U.S., the exchange only includes Bitcoin and Ether at launch, triggering reactions from pro-XRP attorneys. Coinbase announced the launch on May 2nd, noting that it would initially include Ethan BTC perpetual future markets settled in USDC, allowing up to 5x leverage. In response, pro XRP 
lawyer Bill Morgan, who is out of Australia, by the way, guys, sarcastically called attention to the fact that the exchange only supports BTC and Ethereum. Such a big percentage of Coinbase holdings and trading on its exchange, Morgan remarked. While this is factual as BTC and ETH account for a huge chunk of the trade volume on Coinbase, it emphasizes the sole support of these two assets, a trend observed among some American firms such as Fidelity Investments as they seek to avoid regulatory compliance issues in the U.S. Now, Deaton chimed in on this and he put this. Following the announcement, attorney John Deaton and Amicus Curie in the Ripple versus SEC case expressed his dissatisfaction with the crypto regulatory landscape in the U.S. The climate has triggered a mass exodus of firms and limited crypto offerings to BTC and ETH. And guys, this is exactly what we're looking at. But I think once we see this decision from Judge Annalisa Torres, I think you're going to see a massive amount of relistings happen in very, very short order. Now, not only that, we have to remember that this Coinbase International is actually out there for institutional clients. Well, most institutional clients are looking for that regulatory clarity, which they believe Bitcoin and Ethereum have. And why do they believe that, guys? They believe that because of Bill Hinsman's speech out there in 2018. And I think, guys, we are going to see this whole space turned on its head when XRP gets that legal clarity out of this case, especially the secondary market. And it will be XRP that has the genuine court authorized only legal clarity in this entire digital asset space, not just a speech issued by Bill Hinman that the SEC turned around initially and said that was his personal opinion. Then they actually changed their stance when they saw that that argument wasn't helping them at all. And the judge literally rebuked them in that situation, saying that they had no faithful adherence to the law and were really just pushing this agenda forward as it matched what their prerogatives were. Guys, I think we're going to see some big, big things happen, and I think we're going to see it in short order. Now, something else I want to point out here is to get a little deeper into that case now that Judge Annalisa Torres ruled against the SEC on. The U.S. SEC has a bad precedent from XRP lawsuit Judge Annalisa Torres. An old case forms an important precedent against the SEC by the same judge overseeing the Ripple XRP lawsuit. Guys, I've heard a lot of people give flack to Judge Annalisa Torres thinking that, hey, since she was a Democratic appointed lawyer, that or sorry, judge, that she may turn around and actually just do whatever these folks that are in those positions right now say. But guys, look at the what how this judge has ruled in the past based on based on cases brought before her and ruled against the SEC. So even as the crypto community awaits summary judgment in the XRP lawsuit, an old judgment ruling that went against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission could give a lot of confidence to XRP token holders. John Deaton, the attorney representing more than 70,000 XRP token holders, said that there could be a logical conclusion into the lawsuit in a form of a settlement only in case if Ripple wins against the SEC. And guys, he was saying this based on the fact that that they may not want to face an appeal from the SEC. In a recent comment, Deaton said there will not be any chance for settlement if the SEC emerges victorious in a lawsuit. Meanwhile, Ripple Labs and its executives are confident of a win for XRP. And so is a majority of the legal community. And why is that, guys? Well, it's that way because the fact is not one prong of the Howey test has actually been met by the in this case by the SEC. And there was no initial coin offering and there certainly was no investment contract between you you and I and Ripple as a corporation. Us as secondary purchasers of XRP, we were buying that just based on our own understanding of what it was. Some people didn't even know Ripple existed when they initially bought XRP. And there's certainly no obligation from Ripple to the secondary holders. And remember this, guys, in the Howey case that happened back there in the 1940s, the oranges were not securities. If they had been, then every grocery store in America would have had to 
to register with the SEC because they would have been selling, hey, unregistered securities in the oranges. XRP in and of itself is not a security. And I think that's the judgment that we're going to see. Now, in an interesting finding, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission lost in a lawsuit overseen by Judge Annalisa Torres, who is now in charge of the XRP versus SEC lawsuit. In 2019, the judge ruled against the regulatory agency in the SEC versus Rio Tinto lawsuit. When the SEC appealed, the appellate court upheld Judge Annalisa Torres' decision. Pointed out a term pointed out by attorney Jeremy Hogan. Hence, this forms an important precedent against the SEC by the same judge overseeing the Ripple lawsuit. Also, the SEC could face a fresh challenge sometime later in 2023 if the U.S. Supreme Court goes for abolishing the Chevron Doctrine. Earlier, Thorm CoinGate reported that the U.S. top court agreed to consider the proposal to look into the decision making powers federal agencies gain through the doctrine. Guys, if that happens and that really goes forward with the U.S. Supreme Court changing that, then the SEC's ability to do regulation by enforcement will be completely off the table. And that might be one of the best things could ever happen to this space. But I'm telling you guys, we are seeing a lot of chatter going on around here. And from what I heard, there's in fact, in fact, I read a quick article there and that someone was saying, hey, there may be Ripple and Coinbase, maybe in secret talks. I haven't substantiated that. So I really don't know. But I'll tell you what, guys, a lot is going on. And we are going to see some changes happen in this space in a big, big way. Even Patrick McHenry was out there saying, look, we're ready to table some regulatory framework for the United States in this digital asset space within at least two months. And guys, if we get debate on that, and if before the end of the year, we see major regulatory clarity in this space from Congress, I'm telling you, it is going to be on like Donkey Kong. You're going to see institutional adoption in this space in a massive, massive way because they're going to be able to bring in the pension funds, guys, the unionized amounts that can go in. It is going to be crazy. And when that happens, guys, you're going to be thanking your blessings that you got into this space as early as you did because when all that institutional adoption comes in and these prices go up initially, hey, guys, look, the risk is going to come way, way down and the reward will come down with it over time but you're going to be thanking god that you actually had the common sense and the and the know the know-how to get into this space as early as you did i think it's going to be one of the most wealth changing events that we have ever experienced and i'll tell you what i really can't wait to see you in that winner circle absolutely to be sure well, guys, it has been my privilege to coach people from all walks of life, from major league sports players to famous musicians to business owners and financial advisors to government employees and everyday people. And one thing that they're all interested in doing is getting their plan in place before this next bull run absolutely takes off. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one -on -one for one hour over over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals. And we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet, along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now, the cost of that is $250. And if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and we'll get y'all booked in. So guys, this is the video I have for you today. And as always, I truly hope that you enjoyed it. Now, many of you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And hey, don't forget to make your comments down there in the comment section and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our regularly released videos. So guys, in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.